Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of the review of the PlayStation 4. Today we'll be covering the topic of the console. Okay, now let's talk some internal specs. This has a CPU that is AMD codenamed Jaguar. It's an octocore. And it has a GPU with 1.84 teraflops and an AMD Radeon with GDD R5 8GB of RAM. This also has connectability through Ethernet 802.11 B, G, or N Wi-Fi along with Bluetooth 2.1. Now it also comes standard with a 500GB hard drive. This is no longer an SSD to really cut down the price on this. But 500GB even with the OS installed, about 400 or so, really will get you a lot of space for games and recorded video. So what this gobbledygook will mean to you is that you can play out really graphically intense games very well with little to no hesitation. As well as you can store a lot of games on your PlayStation 4, which is very convenient. Now let's move to the outside design of the PlayStation 4. So really, the first thing you'll notice on the PlayStation 4 is its trapezoid-like design. This may seem very childish at first, but it actually really does grow on you. I mean, it's very sleek, slim design, and it's not even that big of a console for what all it can do. Now, to wrap off the external design of the PlayStation 4, let's talk about the light bar on the top. And this basically just does change colors whenever it's turned on or in standby mode or whatever. Also next to it, you know, it's the two different, uh, basically, textures of the PlayStation 4. This may seem weird, but it's actually a really nice, really cool design to it. Okay, let's talk about the front panel of the PlayStation 4. Now, the power button and eject button are very hard to notice unless you really look for them. It's down by the light bar, that's where you'll find them, and it's just touch capacitive buttons, which is pretty cool for the console itself. Now, obviously touching either one will turn on the console, or you can normally turn it on via the PlayStation controller. Also along the front panel, we're pulling in our Blu-ray drive, which will play any PS4 game, along with any Blu-ray movie that is not 3D. It cannot do 3D movies. Anyways, there should be an update for that later on. The last thing on the front panel I would like to talk about is the two USB 3.0 ports. Now they are obviously concealed to really not take away from the design of the PlayStation 4 here. Now, what you may be thinking, well what can I use the USB ports for? Well, you can use it for jump drives or portable hard drives for games. You can also use it to charge your phone or your controller. And I believe, if I'm correct, headsets as well. Anyways, to this date, you can't actually move uh, recorded video from your PlayStation to a USB drive or something like that. There will be an update coming very soon. But you can move games and port them from one console to another and actually play a game off of there. A lot of people have been doing that because the 500 gigabytes, although it being very large capacity, runs out very quickly if you're a hardcore gamer and you've used a lot of video games. Alright, now let's move on to our next section. Very quickly, the side panels on the PlayStation just house venting, which all that venting might not really be necessary as the fan doesn't really kick on in the PlayStation unless running like a disc or playing a game for a long time. Really, the sides are just kind of like a quote-unquote fashion statement for the PlayStation. It does obviously build the PlayStation itself. Okay, so let's talk one of the biggest parts to the exterior of the PlayStation, the back panel. Okay, so first off, we're going to see venting, lots and lots of venting on this thing. Next, you'll notice that power cord there. There's an internal power brick, and the whole shape of the prongs here, and all that looks like an Apple power cord to me. Next is the digital out optical audio, 
which is really just like a very small like headphone port. It is not actually a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but you really get what I'm saying here. Next to the audio is the HDMI, which is standard, going to about 60 frames per second at 1080p and 30 at 4K or UHD as you may refer it to. Next to that, we have our Ethernet port with a very, very bad shot here on my camera. Anyways, that is just wired internet, and this does have Wi-Fi, so you really don't need Ethernet that much unless you want a very fast connection. Lastly, we have our auxiliary port just for some additional options and plugging it into the PlayStation 4. Alright guys, that concludes part one of the review of the PlayStation 4. I hope you liked this. If you did, please like and subscribe. A video will be up next week anyways. Peace out, guys.